po muna ay magpapakilala. Ako po ay fellow Seventh-day Adventist ninyo. I believe in the Holy Scriptures. Lagi ko pong niririgay ito mga kapatid. Ay, English po ba or Tagalog or Tagalog? I like to review this uh, very often because many reasons. Sometimes people accuse me of being offshoot or sometimes, you know, different things. So, to make sure, yan, ang fundamental beliefs. So, we believe in the Holy Scriptures and also another reason why I want to review this is because I myself, I have not memorized this one. So, since uh, this is the most important things, I am a fundamental, it's very nice to review and review. And even my friends, some of my friends at AUP, some even taking theology, sometimes their teacher uh, asked them, what is fundamental belief number 12? And then they said they, they cannot decide. So I think everybody needs to review this always. So first we believe in the Holy Scriptures. Re-reviewin natin ang nire-review ito hanggang natin ma-memorize. The Old and New Testaments are the written word of God. Yan. The written word of God given by divine inspiration. So whether the Bible or the written word of God is written in the table of stones, in the scrolls, or in this uh, modern kind of book, or whether it's in your computer or your iPad or your iPhone, or your Android device, it is still the written word of God given by divine inspiration or even in the memory of many of you who memorize many parts of the scriptures, it is still God's word. It was given by the Holy Spirit, moved by the Holy Spirit, written by people, but from God through the Holy Spirit. And they are the standard and test of character, experience, and the authoritative revealer of doctrines and the trustworthy of God's acts in history. And of course, those things are uh, depending on uh, what is of course written in the scriptures. And I want to emphasize things that uh, usually not very much uh, emphasized. It says here that to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Ayan. Ang ibig sabihin ng law, ayan ang law of the land, law of the school, law of the church, law of the company, law of relationships, law of the family, law, law, law. Whatever the law, the policy, dapat kafi-filter natin yan through the Bible. Why? E parang pakanino sinulat itong Isaiah 820, kundi para sa atin. Therefore, this applies to us. And testimony, lahat ng mga kwento, mga panaginip ko no, mga haka-haka, at saka mga opinion, they have to be filtered through the Word of God. Why? Because if they speak not according to this Word, it is because there is no light in them, or madilim. Ayan. When we say according, ito ang minsan there is a uh, there is many, there are many, you know, our church really, I am very happy that our church is really solid on the Bible truth. When we say according, ibig sabihin, ayon. Kaya, we don't baptize infants, even if the Bible doesn't say you should not baptize infants. Why do we don't baptize infants? Because it's according to the Bible. Why do we don't baptize? Because it's not according to the Bible. Why don't you not baptize using uh, sprinkling? Because the Bible doesn't, it's not according to the Bible, di ba? Does the Bible say that you cannot baptize using sprinkling? Paano din sa mga country na walang tubig? Di ba pwedeng sprinkling na lang? But we don't do that because our church is very solid according to the Bible. So, that is the most safe uh, filter of what of uh, our practices. In the great controversy, it says in the chapter about the Bible or scriptures as a safeguard, it says, to every doctrine and precept, 
our demand should be applied, thus says the Lord. Furthermore, in the sign of ages, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect. Therefore, every variation, <coughs> excuse me, therefore every variation must be even. So, yun na yun, perfect. Huwag nang dadagdagan, huwag babagunin, huwag uh, iibahin. Ganyan po ang Bible. And the reason why we are more loyal to this book, to God's Word, is because the Bible also says, the heaven and earth shall pass away. This word, not a, that nor a title, will pass away from this book. So even if our friends, our, uh, our employers, the government, any organization pass away, this book will not pass away. That's why our loyalty is more to this book than those temporal things, di ba? Kasi saan pa tayo magiging loyal kung di sa pinakamatindi? And God's word is very powerful. Why? Because it can create things. When God says, let there be light, kahit walang generator, magkakalight yan. O ganyan kakapangyarihan ang salita ng Diyos. When God says, uh, Lazarus, come forth, the dead Lazarus will rise to life. Therefore, our loyalty is in the Bible. Because when we die, it is only God's word which can raise us back to life. Di ba? Okay. Yung mga human organizations, kahit na ipipressure nila tayo, bakit? Pag namatay ba ako, kaya nyo ba akong buhayin? Siyempre, hindi. Therefore, our loyalty is in the Bible. The Word of God. And this is what we use for everything. In fact, all our doctrines cannot become doctrines unless they are based from the Bible. According. Now, there is some confusion, a little bit confusion between uh, according and uh, contradiction. For example, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not if they do not contradict the Bible, there is no law in them. There is no light in them. Tama, mali. Tama, in a, in a sense, but it's not as strict as this one. If they don't contradict the Bible, there is no light in them. Tama, di ba? Pero it's not as safe as this one. Because what is written there is according. For example, ayun, sinabi ko yun sa baptism. Kino-contradict ba yung infant sprinkling na baptism sa Bible? Hindi ko alam, pero hindi pa ako nakita ng nagsabi, thou shalt not baptize infants. Di ba? The reason the Roman Church tries to do that, para daw sigurado ang kaligtasan. Para pag namatay daw yung bata, eh, at least na binigan na. Di ba? At saka para sigurado na doon na sa Church, pag panganak pa lang, kasama na sa Church agad. So their mission, their mission objectives is more higher than their biblical accordingness. Doon nila dinidepende yung ano sa mission nila. Pero dapat yung yung lahat ng doctrines sa Bible na kabis, hindi sa ibang doctrines na kabis. So, may nakasulat ba sa Bible, bawal ilipat ang sangpiti ng araw ng Sabado sa linggo? Meron sa prophecy pero hindi direkta. Papaigutin pa ang pagkaintindi. May nakasabi ba sa Bible na, ano ba ba yung mga na dyan? Sinabi ba kay Cain na bawal ka mag-offer mag, uh, ng vegetables? Hindi, di ba? Hindi, di ba? Wala tayong proof. Pero, hindi naman. Pero ang sabi kay Cain, ang i-offer ay lamb. So, ang pinaka-safe mga kapatid ay yung according. According. Kung meron sa inyong nag-work sa, sa healthcare, for example, meron sa inyong doktor, ako yung pasyente, tapos doktor, ako po ay hinihika. Ano pong aking gamot? So, so, so magre-resete yung doktor. Prescription. Pupunta ako sa mercury drug. Sabi ko, hindi ko maintindihan itong gamot. Yun na lang, bibiling ko. Ano? Yun, at saka yun, at saka yun, at saka yun, at saka yun. Yan, yan, yan. Bakit? Bakit sasabihin yung tag mercury drug? Bakit ang dami tayong bibilihin? Hindi naman sinabi ng doktor na bawal kong bilhin yan, ha? Pwede ba yan, mga kapatid? <laughs> Hindi pa pwede. <clears throat> Yun ang ibig sabihin ng prescription. Kung ano yung prescribe ng Diyos, prescri prescribe na marriage, 
Hindi naman sinabi dyan na Okay, sinasabi pala din sa 1 Corinthians yung mga lalaki at lalaki at sa babae at babae. O, hindi lang yun, hindi lang yun yung prescribed, contradicted pa. So pag kinontradict talaga ng Bible, siguradong sigurado na tayo na na bawal talaga yun. At saka ibig sabihin, pati noon pa, may problema na nun. Ano ba yung mga effeminate? O yung mga iba-iba pa ang klase na hindi naman prescribed. Kinokontradict na doon dahil problema na noon. Pero ang pinaka-safe ay yung prescribed, di ba? Sa prescribed worship, prescribed offering, prescribed music, mabuti na lang dito, malakas ang influence ng ating teacher, noon si Ma'am. Kaya, pinapakinggan ko ang kanta ninyo. Ba, parang lahat ng voice lesson yung tao dito. <laughs> Siyempre, yung ating teacher na magaling ay dito galing. Malaking influence ng anyone. Ayun po. So, dito nakabase lahat yung accordingness. Ang pinaka-safe ay prescription. Prescribed ng Bible. Prescribed ng mga propeta na pinadala ng Panginoon. At kasama dyan ang Trinity. Kahit na wala yung Trinity sa Bible, sa English Bible, sa Tagalog Bible, sa Greek at sa Hebrew, but the concept is there. Because, you know, words describe ideas. And the idea is there. So if the idea is there, then whatever you call it, you call it Trinity, Trion, Godhead, as long as you, the understanding, words represent understandings. Sabi nung ibang ayong tayo Trinitarian, galing yan sa Catholic, huwag natin yan papaniwalaan. Hindi naman ang ating basihan ay lahat ng kabaliktaran ng Catholic Church. Ang ating basihan ay kung nasa Bible. Kung nandun sa kabilang church, tapos nasa Bible din, according, ay hindi tayo ay naninubala din. We are not an inverse of the Roman Church. Of course, we believe that the Trinity included is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we also believe in creation. We also believe in the nature of man. We were created perfect. We are given many things, but because of disobedience, we have we are born with weaknesses and tendencies to evil. That's why. But the good news is that God is in the business of restoring us humans, penitent mortals, to the image of the Maker. So there is restoration and there is revival towards what God wants us to be. Kaya, ayan. God is revealing His will to us so that we can be prepared to take care of environment and for heavenly nature, heavenly living. Of course, we believe there are great controversy. And the nice thing about the great controversy is the end is known. So, alam na natin ang pupuntahan, alam na natin ang result. Jesus Christ is going to win the debate, the controversy, and we just have to be faithful to God. As in the days of Noah, so will be in the days of the last days where they will be eating and drinking and giving mar marrying and giving in marriage until the flood came. But this time, there will be no more big worldwide flood according to the Bible because there is a rainbow. Oh, by the way, sometimes people say that the rainbow is not a sign because they can explain it in science because you can create a rainbow. But the Bible doesn't say the rainbow is a miracle. It's just a sign. You, can, you might be, explain, be able to explain a sign, but it's still a sign, even if you can explain it, di ba? So, uh, next time, the world will be reformatted. <laughs> reformatted, di ba? Parang, parang cell phone, parang hard disk. It will not be by water, but by fire. So, that is the end of the great controversy. And if you type 6,000 years in E.G. White writings, you will find out that the great controversy here on earth has a time of 6,000 years. And pag kinukit niyo yung 6,000 years, linas niyo lahat yung mga ninuno, ninuno, ninuno sa Bible, parang abot na yung 6,000 years. 2014 na, rampas na yata. Pero buti na lang, hindi natin masyado eksakto alam yung talagang eksakto dates sa, sa Bible. Anyway, the bridegroom delay because he is waiting for others to repent. 
and we are not yet finished with the work. But the nice thing is the great controversy is solved. Jesus, when he was crucified, he said, it is finished. And therefore, when God says it is finished, it is really finished. And we also believe the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, almost the whole New Testament and the whole the Old Testament predicts it, the New Testament uh, describes it and quotes the Old Testament and every the whole Bible is pointing to this life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even the calendar, the center of the years, the one and one, there is no zero now, is Jesus Christ here on earth. So we also believe and this whole thing of salvation is God's plan because of our sins. And this is really the best thing. If we understand that our sins really deserve that uh, we deserve to die, but God, because of His grace, of His love for us, He delayed. He gave us chance that we might learn God's plan of salvation, that we might understand His love, that he might, we might react properly to his love so that we can be saved. There are so many other planets that God created, but God did not just let this earth disappear because of his love. He wants everyone to have a chance. And this is our duty to understand this, to make it real in our life, and to share it with others. Therefore, there is baptism, which is the justification our sins are forgiven when we repent and there is the ceremony of baptism we die our old self dies sabi ni Cesar Montano yung kilala niyo yung Cesar noon patay na yun oh ini Christian kasi siya marami daw nagdidisun sabi niya sa kanya sa harap yung kilala niyo yung Cesar Montano patay na yun tama yung sagot niya di ba kasi nung bininyagan siya ni Pastor Manyes namatay na talaga yung Cesar Montano na luma at nung lumabas siya sa tubig, bago na yun. All things are passed away. Ayan. So, that is the function. That is the what baptism represents. We are dead in our sins and we are born again in Jesus Christ. New life in Christ. But actually, we still die daily. Diba? Sabi ni Dog Bachelor, if you don't die daily, may ipon yung kamatayan sa iyo. <laughs> may ipon daw yung kamatayan. You will, you become very dead because you are not dying daily. You become very dead. Okay, Pwede ano? So, and then there is sanctification wherein we die daily. And then there is uh, uh, glorification when Jesus comes. Okay. So are you already saved? <laughs> we are in the process. The Bible says, ye are saved through grace. But of course, there is also saving grace which is continuously and uh, there are many phases. And the growing in Christ, we meaning that uh, we are not afraid of evil forces that are trying to control us. But, because Romans 8 says, or are persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, or nor even angels, even nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, kahit bagyo, kidlat, mayon volcano, can erupt, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Nakita niyo dyan yung powers, pag nakapanood kayo ng mga nakakatakot na movie tungkol sa mga human organizations who are trying to control the world, do not be afraid. Because Romans 8 says, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Of course, we believe also in the church. Everybody who believes genuinely to Jesus Christ is included in the church. Therefore, we are the same church as with Adam, Abraham, Noah, because they were looking at Jesus Christ and predicting and expecting. And you can see the nice Bible history prophecy timeline. Lahat doon. We are the same church. Noah, Enoch, Abraham, Apostle Paul, the disciples, until now. 
everybody who believes the Bible accurately and practices and believes Jesus Christ. And, pag tinignan niyo yung dulo, minsan kasi napakaraming chismis. Hindi na natin maintindihan kung ano mayayari sa ating church minsan. Pag <coughs> nagbabasa tayo ng sad, maraming mga bad things sa internet. Ha? Maraming nagpapalat ng mga ano-ano. Minsan, hindi ko maintindihan kung anong nangyayari. Ang tinitingnan ko na lang mga kapatid ay yung dulo ng last day events. Kasi sa dulo ng prophecy, sabi ko na saan sa prophecy itong mga gantong mayayari, hindi ko maintindihan. Doon na lang ako sa dulo titingin. Kasi sa dulo ng prophecy, sigurado, when Jesus comes, He is going to come for a pure woman. And the pure woman is talking about the church. Therefore, kung gaano tayo kasigurado na totoo ang Biblia, gaano kasigurado na magkakaroon ng pure biblical church when Jesus comes. Kung hindi totoo ang Bible, hindi rin yung totoo. Pero dahil totoo ang Bible at sinasabi ng Bible yun, totoo yun. Paano mangyayari yun? Ay, ang Diyos ang bahala. Kasi siya ang nagsabi, yun ay magkakatotoo kahit na hindi natin alam kung paano. So, dun tayo naniniwala and i-explain niya dun sa last day events. Mabuti na lang, meron tayong spirit of prophecy. The my favorite book na pinang pinagsasagot ko sa mga option at saka maninira ng church ay yung chapter sa last day events na ang title ay God's Last Day Church. Dahil doon, hinahanay ni LNG White ang mangyayari sa Adventist Church kung paano makakarating doon sa dulo ng purity. Of course, we are not perfect. She says in that chapter, we are a church militant. We are fighting. But it, God will set everything in order according to the subheading. God will set everything in order. The faithful will become the church triumphant. How about you? Ayaw maging faithful. They will be sifted. Ano niyo sifted? Yung pag tatahin. They will be sifted out. So, hindi pwede tayong lumabas sa Seventh-day Adventist Church. Hindi tayo pwede magsatay tayo ng sariling church dyan. We are the remnant kuno. Because the spirit of prophecy says, ang lalabas daw, yung ayaw mag-type. Gusto na kasi nila konektahin yung sarili nila ang type. Ang lalabas daw ay yung sinners. Hindi, pwede tayo mag-option o magawa ng bagong church. Saan natin ang hanapin yung sarili natin sa Bible prophecy timeline? Wala doon. Ang sabi ni Ellen Joyt, ang lalabas ay yung sinners. Sabi pa doon, no need for new organization. Wala nang new organization. Kaya, <clears throat> dun sa IAS Theological Forum na by God's grace I was able to attend, ang topic ay remnant. And then si Dr. Sabwin ng Theological Seminary, Dean ng Theological Seminary, he presented a paper, is there still an another remnant after this remnant? Because the idea of the remnant, and dyan na sa baba, ayan, sunod. Yung remnant, yung pag nagkakasala na yung mga tao, magka-remnant, sila Noah, pag nagkakasala na yung mga tao, magka-remnant, si Abraham, magkakasala yung mga tao, magka-remnant, yung Israel, pinatay nila si Jesus, nag-rebelde sila sa their, their teaching traditions instead of the, the word. Karemnant ng Christians, the Christians did not continue with their, with their uh, progressive revelation, and yung Adventist na ang nagtutuloy mag-aral, na mag-aral at mag- lagay ng lagay ng lahat ng mga beliefs na makikita nila sa Bible. Therefore, the remnant na lang, as this described in Revelation 12.7, is the Seventh-day Adventist now. Why? Because the dragon is wrath with us. And, by the way, if you are think you are in the remnant church, there is an implication. The implication is, the dragon is, is uh, hates you. Why? Because you are keeping commandments. The Bible also says, He that lives godly shall suffer persecution. So, you have, you can expect that, pero worth it pa rin. Bakit? Eh, bubuhayin naman sa, sa dulo ng panahon. Kahit pa maubos yung ating load of life, marirefund naman. Parang load yun. Eh. Kahit maubos, kung irirefund naman, okay lang. Di ba? Hindi pala nauubos eh. Parang unlimited na road. Kahit ubusin mo na ubusin, hindi talaga maubus. So, keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yung testimony of Jesus Christ, sabi sa kabilang revelation, sa kabilang text, 
I, it is the spirit of prophecy. Marami mga church na spirit of prophecy daw. They are also founded around 1844. But kunti lang yung spirit of prophecy nila. Tayo ang pinakamarami. Sa sobrang dami, hindi natin lahat mabasa. Diba? Ang dami-dami. Mabuti na lang, libre na ngayon. Nandyan sa inyo mga cellphone at sa mga computer. At nasa internet, egywhitewritings.org. My favorite, one of my favorite uh, websites where I copy and paste to Facebook. Yan ang ministry natin. Copy and paste ministry. Okay. So, we are not just remnant just for becoming remnant. We have a mission. Yan. Yung Israel, remnant din sila. But they don't understand the mission. That's why they killed the missionary. <laughs> they crucified the missionary. Diba? Yung mga pari. Yung mga parisi. Nagpa-fast sila? Very good. Nag-study ng Bible? Very good. Nag-pray? Very good. But they did not understand mission. When the missionary came, they crucified. Therefore, we have to be careful. Make sure we don't only fast, pray, and uh, study the Bible. We have to do mission. You know why? Mission balances our religious uh, life, our mind. Without mission, parisi lang tayo. But the remnant has a mission. And the mission is in Revelation 14 to tell the, the world to worship because judgment is coming. Yan. And of course, you know, in our remnant church, we are united even if we are different, different, different ideas, different, different things. But you know, it is the body of Christ. We are not the head. Si Ma'am si ma Merin yata nag-invite sa akin na mag-speaker dito. Noon, tapos na-postpone. Tapos, nireset yung date ulit. Tapos na-postpone ulit. Sabi ko, hindi yata God's will, ako yung mag-senta ulit doon. Pero, dun sa mga na-postpone na date, Ma'am, meron binigay ang Panginoon na papagawa sa akin. Katulad ng isa, na-postpone, tapos pagkagabi, tumawag si Pastor, ako daw ay mag-help dun sa BOY. So, mas kailangan pala ako dun sa kabila. So, ang aking naiintindihan sa mga nangyayari, we are not the boss. In God's word, I am not the boss. I am a servant like you all and me. So kahit hindi natin naiintindihan ang mga nangyayari, sige lang. Dahil ang boss, sigurado sa nangyayari. Kahit hindi natin alam, it's okay. Because we are part of the body of Christ. Who is the head? Of course, Jesus Christ is the head. We are the branches. We are, when we are, we are the body of Christ. Compared to a vine, we have the branches. If we are disconnected, we cannot bear fruit. But if we are connected, <clears throat> there will be much fruit. <clears throat> and we are united. Yeah, basta maram natin na they are they love God. We help each other. We don't push each other to help to help. Dahil ko ganyan si muntang na si No, we help each other reach heaven. Bakit tayo tutulakan ng muntang si Jerno? Anong pare-pareho tayo magtagpuan doon? But we help each other. That's why the Bible says, when we reprove, we reprove like as if we are the one with error. Because we have to help each other. Our goal is to help each other. To become more like Christ. Lahat naman tayo beneficiaries of His grace and His salvation. Okay. And of course, baptism. We finished that already. Lord's Supper. Jesus Christ says we have to other, we have to uh, do this often, and we all we do self-examination, repentance, and confession, and the ordinance of humility, foot washing, and and of course we have spiritual gifts and ministries. Yung iba may pera, pero walang time, iba, dan nakasmay. Yung iba may time, walang pera. Ano ba gawin natin? Paano tayo mag-gagawa uh, ng missionary work? Magtulong. Yung may, yung may pera, papakainin niyo walang pera para maka-voice of youth sila. Ito, ganun yun. Ganun yung ginawa niyo dati dito. I was observing. Spiritual gifts and ministries. That's why God provided the church with so many different gifts. Many know how to sing, many know how to smile, many know how to prepare nice food, many know how to... Uh, oh, drive. 
yun ang aking ministry mag-drive. Kasi pag pinag-drive mo si Pastor David Ashe, ay masaya, di ba? Pag pinag-drive mo yung mga missionaries natin, you hear what they are saying, you hear the, their needs, and the, nahahawa pa dun sa aura nila. Masaya. Kaya ayaw ko ibenta yung sasakyan ko kahit ang hirap pa ang rin. Kasi ang dami nang naisakay ng mga missionary. Dati yung mga pinapanood natin lang sa TV, by God's grace, mga kaibigan na natin sila, at sinakay ko pa dyan. Ay, hindi ko ibenta yan kahit na mahal yung price. I'm not worshiping the experience or the... But it just helps us remind our commitment that all our things should be give, used for the work of God. Minsan kasi pinapanalahin mo, sabi rin ng umaga, naglalakad ako sa AP. Lord, what am I going to, to do? Nakita ko yung mga nakaparadang mga van dun sa parking area. Lahat yan. Gagamitin sa ministry. Okay. Yun pala yun. Okay. Very simple. Driving. Di ba? Spiritual gifts and ministries. Ayan no? Self-sacrificing service. Pag walang pamasahe yung mga estudyante, mag-detect, sir. Nandito kami sa church planting. May klase kami bukas. Wala kaming pamasahe. Kaya anong gagawin natin? Siyempre, susunduin natin sila. Because this, this is a self-sacrificing service. Okay. Tutulungan natin yung mga yung mga gumagawa sa gawain. Para pag may nabinyagan, para na rin tayo may napabinyagan, di ba? At doon tayo masaya sa aming paghihirap sa PIC, sa audiovisual, sa mga week of prayer, ang dami-dami gagawin, ikaw pinakamaaga, ikaw rin pinakahuli. Tapos nakatayo mo pa minsan, boom, service. Pero pag may nabinyagan, kahit isa, tapos, sulit ang lahat ng pago. And we also have the spirit of prophecy, which is specially, greatly manifested in the ministry of Sister Ellen G. White. And her writings are very good. If it was not for Ellen G. White, our schools would be under the water now, or yesterday. But Ellen G. White says, you put schools on the mountain. Therefore, our schools are in the mountain, and walang pasok, kahit na wala nung baha, di ba? Because we follow Ellen G. White's instructions. In, sabi nila, in every end of the road is an Adventist school. <laughs> That's why we we are we have that advantage. Energy White says that cancer is because of bacteria or something. And the medical people were laughing. But uh, after 150 years, they are finding that it's true. I'm not very accurate on the science, on the, I don't know if it's, I described it correctly. But there are so many things that she said that just make sense to the scientific community just now. Because God provided all of this information even long, long time before science can find out. That's why the NGO says the people who are preparing for the second coming should stop eating flesh food, the science, Scientific community understands that now, di ba? And she says, we should stop eating egg. Oh, grabe naman. Kahapon may nakita ako sa Facebook, yung isang egg daw, sobra na daw yun. Oh. So, sometimes, ano yung mas maganda? Science o, ano, SOP? Eh, of course, SOP, di ba? Because that's advanced. It's from God. God invented this world. And all prophets, they were impressed by the Holy Spirit, including Ellen Jewel. Even Isaiah, Jeremiah, Moses, Paul, uh, John, the Revelator, they have message from God in the name of Jesus Christ, given through the Holy Spirit, and written by ten men for the benefit of the church. <clears throat> And that's why we have to continue to read this. Uh, and there is another special function. You know that most controversial uh, discussions in the church when Ellen G. White was still alive. So we discuss the theological discussion. Tapos tatanong niya sa Ellen G. White. Tama ba? So the function of the spirit of prophecy was to affirm whatever kind of interpretation. If Ellen G. White is wrong, 
they will study again. Or they will, whatever, they will study from the Bible, but they will con affirm with energy wise. What is the real message? What is the real uh, message from God? So when we understand the Bible, when we study the Bible, we try to get affirmation from the spirit of prophecy. According to Associate Director of, of EGY State, sabi niya, for me, at least for me, spirit of prophecy is important because without this, we will become congregationalism. How? Some people will believe this, some people will believe that because they are all PhD in theology. So they all have different kinds of interpretation. In fact, there are 45,000 out in 2014 now, there are 45,000 Christian denominations all around the world. Huh? 45,000 groups of people claiming to believe the Bible and the Bible only. How come there are 45,000 kinds of belief sets from the Bible? Because they don't have the advantage of having the spirit of prophecy. But as Adventists, when we read the Bible, we look for affirmation from SOP. If it's affirmed there, we are sure. If not, never mind. We are to study some more. Okay. <clears throat> they also make clear that the Bible is the standard, but Ellen Joy teaches that the Bible is the standard, where experience must be tested. And they don't contradict. And we believe the law of God, that's why I will memorize the Ten Commandments, and I like especially to emphasize on the thou shalt not steal, because, you know, these days many people are stealing MP3 and Gubi and, you know, <laughs> Yeah. Because, uh, you know, we have to respect copyright law because otherwise, how can the literature evangelists survive if there is no copyright law? Diba, pasiroksa na natin yung Bible story, diba? O kaya yung head and home, pasiroksa lang. O kaya scan natin, tapos isente lang natin sa internet. O di, maralang, we understand the, the pain of being stolen from when something is stolen from us. For example, you draw something, tapos pinaserox nung, ano, tapos yung design mo, di ba? So there is what we call uh, intellectual property laws, which uh, we have to respect. That's why nobody can use the Seventh-day Adventist logo unofficially. If you go to Adventist.org, only Churches, official churches, official institutions that are in the Seventh-day Adventist yearbook can use the trademark Seventh-day Adventist, even Adventist or even SDA. At saka yung logo dapat eksaktong ganun. Siyempre, hindi naman natin hahabulin yung hindi eksaktong. Pero, that is the best thing. Tingnan nyo yung logo nila guys sa COP. Tinanggal nila, di ba? You know why? Somebody discovered, somebody sent them information about that. It has to be the same. Exactly the same, the colors, the measurements, the ratios, etc. Para hindi pinaglalaroan ng mga tao sa internet na kung ano ang nilalagay ng dekorasyon. Okay. So, we respect each other, love people, love God. And especially the Sabbath. Ayan. Last uh, week, ito yung pinag-discuss namin ni eh, Pastor Coach sa uh, Kabilang Church. And the Sabbath is uh, very important. Of course, we believe in stewardship. Mamaya, tingnan natin kung gano'ng kabilib yung stewardship, no? Pag-collect na offering. Ayan. Sukatan yan. And also, we believe, by the way, even if you don't have anything to give, just give, whatever. Because people are looking. Diba? <laughs> Tama ba yun? <laughs> even if it's two mites, just give. Because ma ma baka makita kayo niya ni Jesus Christ, ikikwento niya sa mga disciples. Tapos sinulad ng mga disciples sa sa Bible. Tapos, ang dami yung nagbasa ng Bible, na-influensyahan sila lahat. Sabi ni Ellen G. White. Kaya sinabi ni Jesus, the woman who gave two mites, he gave more than what the others gave. The total. How can that be true? But when Jesus says something, it becomes true. You know how it became true? Many people read the story. And because many people read the story, they also gave. Because of the example of the woman. And therefore, in the accounting in heaven, all of the people gave because of the influence of the woman are also credited to her. Diba? Kaya kahit punti lang yung bigay niya one centavo, ilagay niya pa rin kasi baka may ma-influensyahan. O, diba? The reference for that is if you type in gathering work, 
you in the spirit of prophecy, you will find that example. Example from Nehemiah, example from the woman, etc. And that's a very nice story. Sa langit pala, hindi amount ang binibilang, kundi influence. Oh, mas marami kang na-influensyahan, mas mayaman ka sa langit. So, influence pala, hindi amount. Pero yung amount, nakaka-influence din yun eh. Diba? We use the amount. Si, ano, those people who really understand salvation, they run out of money doing God's work. Example, si Nicodemus. Oh, may benefit siya galing sa as a member of the Sanhedrin. Religious. May sweldo siya. Pero, when Jesus Christ, nung mga disciples, he, Ellen G. White says, he became poor from supporting the disciples after Jesus' death. So makikita kung where your money goes, there your heart is also. And I hope it goes to heaven because the only way we can take our riches to heaven, we can only take our characters, is to, sabi ng iba, to send it ahead. Padala na daw yung kayamanan, mauna na yung bagay sa langit. Paano? Eh, bigay sa mga nangangailangan. Lalo na yung nangangailangan na deserving. Kasi may mga nangangailangan, di ba? Panigarin nyo lang eh. O kaya, ibibili ng alak. Eh, those are the non-deserving poor. If they will, if you buy big give five peso and then they will run and to new top and buy rugby. Anong klaseng, ano yun? Di napasama, palalo yun, binigyan natin. There is also, and it says, there is the deserving poor and there is the poor that <laughs> bagyan na lang ng sky flips. <laughs> so, stewardship, including the stewardship of our environment, tithes and offerings, etc. And this is our opportunity para makaganti sa Panginoon. Di ba? Pag minahal tayo ng Panginoon, gusto rin natin gumanti, hindi tayo makatulog ng sabado ng hapon ng walang ginagawa. Oo? Oh, ito ba yun? Restless tayo. Pag nasanay tayo ng ka-outreach, pag sabado ng hapon tapos biglang walang activity, ha? Bakit ganito? Hahanap ako ng church na may activity. Tulog kasi yung church ko. Kaya humahanap ako ng church na may activity pag hapon. Dahil kailangan gisingin yung church. Some of the virgins are sleeping. I think all of them. Hindi na lang meron pa rin wise. Christian behavior. Ayan, alam nyo na ito. Hindi, you don't drink, you don't smoke, and you don't watch MTV. Ay, you don't watch uh, movies. That's why our amusement and entertainment should meet the highest standard of Christian taste and beauty. Oh, kahit na mabait si Pacquiao, we don't watch supposed to watch, uh, no, ang daming Bible verse dun sa kanyang gym. But we should not watch boxing. Why? Because it is not the highest standards of Christian taste and beauty. Sabi sa Romans, paulit-ulit ko na kasi sinasabi yan, pero parang sabi nung nasa internet, you are like Noah. Nobody believes. <laughs> Hindi na lang ako nag-comment. <clears throat> Sige lang, we will just tell the truth. Those who love God, the sheep know His voice. Ayan. But we have to encourage people because uh, the Bible says we have to teach all things. Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore, all nations, teaching the, uh, preach, baptize, so preach na konti, uh, teach na konti, baptize, and then teach all things. Ang evangelism, hindi patapos hanggang matapos ang teach all things. Gano'ng karami yung all things? Dami. Hindi yun makabus-ubus. Kaya ang evangelism, tuloy-tuloy. Pag nakabaptize na, hindi ibig sabihin tapos ng evangelism. Because the Great Commission includes teaching all things. Oh, we will tell them, you don't know all things yet, don't be proud, attend the Sabbath school, and the all things there are being taught. Diba? Or, that's why I'm reviewing the 28 fundamental beliefs. Baka mayroong mga nabaptize dito, hindi na-lecturean ng 28 na nights. Di ba? Therefore, we don't know yet everything. So, maganda pa rin yung mahahaba na evangelistic. Ano? Maganda nga dito sa inyo, malapit lang sa AUT. Pag maraming mga isidyante dyan na magtutulog, if we don't have time. And then they even need to go home because they can just come out of their class and continue in the night. 
So Christian behavior, yan. That's why when we realized that Ellen G. White taught the church music, oh, alam ko, your church music is nice. I just want to appear. You know, Ellen G. White, if there is some person who saw heavenly worship, heavenly music, it is Ellen G. White in her dreams and visions. And when she saw heavenly music, she doesn't even want to come back. But then God told her, you have a mission to tell the people down to repent. So, when she came out of vision and dreams, she, yung music na nakita niya doon, yun din yung gusto niya ituro sa kanyang church, sa Seventh-day Adventist Church. And they made a hymnal, him and James, her and James White. They compiled hymns and they told the church how to sing. Sabi ni Ellen G. White, do not sing funeral hymns, funeral songs. Ibig sabihin niyo, parang funeral songs. But you should be happy. Yan. Tapos, you know where I heard it? this from Ayas, uh, I think se several months ago. The EGY estate came there and uh, made uh, officially made a branch for the EGY estate. Uh, Ayas. So the speaker was Dr. James Nix, the EGY estate director currently. And in the afternoon, they had a program. The name of the program was Songs in Zion. I said, what is this Songs in Zion? You are expecting some kind of lecture. But we just sang hymns, 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 hymns the whole afternoon. So sabi ni James Nix, you know, this was the favorite of Ellen G. White. When she is sitting in her chair, that's her chair. Because she, he's the EGY state director. He has pictures. That's her chair. When she sits there, sometimes she sings. And according to her, her relatives, I interviewed the relatives, this is what she sings. And this is the tune. So let's sing. Let's sing, sing. Because if you want to know the, the best model for heavenly music, Ellen G. White is the best. Uh, the one who we, we, uh, we trust, who saw and heard. And sometimes even when she has very heavy spiritual burden for the church, when she sleeps at night, in the morning she says, did you hear the choir last night? Did you hear the choir? She asked her relatives. And the relatives, of course, and the helpers, they don't have any idea what she heard. That means God sent heavenly choir to sing to her during the night because her burden is very heavy. Yeah. So sometimes they are singing in the congregation and then Jewett will come. No, no, no. Please stop, brethren. She will say, I heard heaven in singing and worship. And it's not like how we are singing. You are singing like you don't understand the words. You should sing from your heart things that are understandable. Dapat naiintindihan yung words. And from your heart, let's try again. So they tried again. Of course, it was better. So, if you want to see that book, you can go, you can Google uh, Songs of Zion and put the name James Nix and then put also Review and Herald. And they give us free for free to download the PDF of the Table of Contents lab. But at least, the Table of Contents is there. You can just derive the, the contents from the other things. The hymns are there, you just look for the hymns in our hymn. And, ang ganda. Tapos ang debate sa music. Pero hindi nyo nang problema yun dito. Marriage in the family, buti na lang, Bible says, Children, obey your parents, for this is right, in the Lord. Uh, obey your parents in the Lord. Respect or uh, honor your parents. And, husbands, love your wife, as God loves the Lord. Ephesians 5. And wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as unto the Lord. Okay. Kung wala yan sa Bible, ako, magulo. Hindi natin alam kung sino magsasubmit. And of course, Jesus Christ is our high priest in heaven. His, uh, his ministry started in 1844. At the end of 2,300 days, this is our only, this is the only <coughs> Distinctive doctrine we have, the, one of the most uh, distinctive doctrines, pala. and every 10 years, some persons try to remove this. But Ellen Jewett says very clearly in the spirit of prophecy, this will not be removed. Therefore, ang nare-remove, yung gusto mag-remove nito. Nare-remove ng credentials. Okay, of course we believe in the second coming, because all of the signs, are there financially 
yung ngayon, yung mga baha, natural calamities, they are coming as warnings to what is coming finally. And, and we believe that there is then, uh, yeah, that's our topic in Sabbath School, and uh, these things, uh, you know, already. Okay. So, since our topic is last day events, the Earth's last crisis will be, everybody is worrying, but many people don't know what is going to happen. And so the, even the disciples ask, when shall these things be? But Jesus Christ says, we don't know, only the Father knows, but there are signs in the heavens, signs in the earth, false prophets. By the way, if you heard somebody preach that the heart is caused by Japan or US or whatever, Ellen G. White says clearly, it gives us clue in the last day events that the natural disasters are beyond the control of men. Therefore, hindi yan kinokontrol ng US, ba't sila tinamaan ng Katrina? Hindi rin yan kinokontrol ng Japan, ba't sila na tsunami? Diba? Ang buti na lang, may SOP. As it, say, it says, natural, these natural calamities seemingly uncontrollable by men. Therefore, it cannot be controlled by men. Are the warnings. God is, the angels are holding the wings from the four corners of the earth so that they will so that people who need to repent can still repent. Signs on the earth, false prophets, there will be false prophets. You know what is a false prophet? God says something, the prophet says something. There is also this thing about, uh, or God, the false prophet says something that God does not say. So make sure, I tell, I tell all my friends, huwag nyo nang pagwala sa Bible o sa SOP, huwag nyo nang banggitin. Kasi baka tayo maging false prophet. Yan. Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. That's why yung mga Bereans sa Bible, when they hear something, they will research. Mag-google sila. Kung may Google na nun. Diba? Pag may narinig tayong bago, punta sa Google. Type Bible and then yung idea. Or punta sa... You know, when I hear something new, may, minsan may nagsabi, yung mark of the beast daw, may bagong explanation na daw yun. Hindi na daw yun yung papasi. Yung book ay hindi na daw yung imbis. Oh, sabi ko, anong klase explanation? Hindi namin niya sinasabi kung ano. Sabi lang niya, may bago daw na explanation. Sabi ko, sige, tingnan natin. So I reviewed the great controversy. It's still the same. The great controversy doesn't change. It's written already. And it's right as it's resting, so it cannot be changed. Even the secretaries cannot change it. It's right state will not change it. I reviewed Mark Finley's sermon. Ganun pa rin naman. I reviewed Doug Batsinor's sermon, ganun pa rin. I went to BRI, ganun pa rin. Of course, in joint state, same as, where did that new explanation come from? I don't know. So, we should be careful. We have to check everything from the Bible and the SOP if it is appeared there. Because many shall come in my name and shall deceive many. But sometimes we are ourselves deceived because we did not check. So, the best thing is really to make sure what we are saying is according to the word. Isaiah 8.20 If they speak not according, brown out. Kaya, mahina ang kurente. Yan, according. And Ellen G. White had uh, experience with the false prophets before. Hindi maintindihan niya kung anong sinasabi. They can quote many scriptures, but sometimes they will be wrong in some. So, but uh, let us help each other now to find the real truth. And in the last statements, there will be gluttony and intemperance. Yeah, bakit na lang sa Bible, lagi na lang pag may problema, sinasabi, they were eating and drinking. O kaya, huwag laging patlak ang hinahanap. <laughs> ano, friend? <clears throat> oh, gluttony and intemperance daw. In fact, Ellen G. White says, yung marami daw nakakain pag Sabado, I am surprised that she is using this word, stupid. Nagiging daw stupid sa afternoon at hindi na maintindihan ang message. Hindi lang hindi maintindihan, hindi talaga nakakarating. Kasi daw, number one, you overwork yourself. When you overwork yourself and you cannot come to church the Sabbath or you cannot uh, understand, you are also breaking the Sabbath by overworking yourself in the whole week. And if you if you do not have work or you don't work, work and you overeat, you also cannot understand the message because your concentration of blood is in the stomach. Therefore, ano, knockdown. Subukan nyo mamayang hapon. 
Kung ayaw naman yung tangali. Kung ayaw kayo napakarami, I assure you, knockdown kayo. Deeds of violence. Ayan, may mga batang nang baba rin ng teacher. Kasi tinatanggal kasi nila yung prayer sa public school sa US eh. Tapos, pag ginanong sila, tatakas sila. Diba? Wars and disasters. Great balls of fire. Oh, meron pa pala ng great balls of fire. Saan yan? Baka yun yung sa ano? Earthquakes and floods. Ayun, flood. Kitang-kita natin. Crime, famines, pestilence. God's purpose in the calamities is to conwarn about the coming plagues. Therefore, the coming events are in the hands of the Lord. Mabuti na lang. We should not be afraid. The Bible says, ano? Lift up your head. When you see these things come close, lift up your head. For your salvation, draw it nigh. So, heaven is watching. Ayan. So, we don't know when Jesus will come. And we are not supposed to say five years or ten years. Or, yan, nakasulat dyan. Hindi ko lang alam sa aming sakto. Pero, there is a delay. But we cannot say two years or five years na lang or so. Because we don't know. Nobody knows the day and the hour. Time, but, but, by the way, sometime, someday later, God will announce the day and the hour. In thunder. To those who don't believe, it will sound like thunder. Those who believe, they will know the day and the hour. Later, it will be from God. The announcement is from God. Because time setting leads to unbelief, and there is no more other time prophecy beyond 1844. Ah, nakita niyo yung mga drawing-drawing sa Facebook? May mga date na may ganyan-ganyan? Ha? Ito ang ipipaste ko, pinipaste ko sa kanila, comment. No more time prophecy beyond 1844. Oh, di ba? Kasi kung ano nung kinuulaan nila eh. Ay, nakasulat dyan, no more time prophecy. It doesn't mean no more prophecy. Wala lang time prophecy. You cannot put any other date beyond 1844. Ellen G. White expected Christ to return in her day, but the mission is not yet finished. That's why the delay is explained. The mission is not finished. Even the Israelites are murmuring in the wilderness. They are cooking on Sabbath. Ay, Tama ba yun? Kaya hindi siya nakarating dun sa ano eh. Tugas ulo nila eh. You know, the biggest test is Sabbath. Di ba? The biggest test and the end is Sabbath. Even in the time of Israel, Israel, the biggest test is Sabbath. And one of the biggest tests also is food. Diyan pumalpak si Eva at si Adam. Diyan nagsaksid si Jesus sa food. Si Moses din. 40 days and 40 nights, he denied his food up there. Kaya kahit nakapatay siya ng Egyptian, pinayagan siya ng Diyos na kumarga ng 10 commandments na may nakasilot daw siya ng kill. Diyan din nagsaksid si Elijah. 40 days and 40 nights. Yung mga apostles, 120 meeting in the upper room, they fasted 10 days. Diyan din siya nagsaksid. I think the formula for revival and reformation where God wants to use us is Bible study, fasting, prayer, and visionary work. If you combine all of these three dangerous things, kakalog itong church. Sabi mo kay pastor, gabi, kulang na lang pastor ito. Manginginig kakalog ng MPS. Because I see in other people's experiences, when we try to all do all these things, it just happens. God makes us useful in His work. So there is a murmuring, there is a rebellion, So, pag pinag-combine mo yung food at saka yung saba, nako, pagkain sa saba, ang pinakamatinding test. Saba na, malaking test, at yung pagkain, malaking, malaking test pa. di ba? Ang hirap makalimutan ang egg, ang pizza, ang kung ano, ano ang quail joy. Yun yung quail joy. Yung kinakain ng Israelites dun sa paseo. <laughs> quail joy yun eh. Sabi mo sa Bible, daw siya nang eat quail? Hindi naman. Clean yun, di ba? But there is the best things. God's promises are conditional. That's why, hindi pa dumarating si Jesus Christ. What is Christ waiting for? It is the manifestation of Himself in His church. I tell you, my friend, from what I observe, God is restoring the truth in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Noon, konti lang kami nag-preach na bawal magluto pang sabado. Ngayon, nag-attend ako na Ayas Asian Theological Forum. 
Ang speaker sa Auto Worship, Ministerial Director Associate ng SSD, si Pastor Sinaga. Sabi niya, cooking and preparation of food should be done before Sabbath. He is just quoting from Adventist the Lord. That's what it says. Here. Ayan. Hindi niya nakalagay yung microwave tsaka na iskuken. Basta, understood, yung cooking, ano yung difference ng cooking at tsaka ng... Sabi ni Ellen G. White, it is not God's will that His children will eat cold food during Sabbath. So, pwede i-warm. Kapag mag-warm tayo, magpapaapoy pa rin tayo ng apoy. Therefore, hindi yung pagpapaapoy ang problema. Bakit? Sabi ni Ellen G. White, pwede mag-warm. Pero hindi pwede mag-cook. Ay, ibig sabihin, hindi yung pagpapaapoy ang problema. But that's the common explanation. It's the burning, it's the starting of the fire that is difficult. That's why we can now cook now, and we can, but before they were not allowed to cook. But I tried to look for that explanation in our documents, official documents, EGY, Bible, and DRI. I cannot find it. Therefore, I, cook, I think it is an opinion. Ang pinakasigurado ay yung according. And kung susundan natin talaga yung according, Exodus says, Sieve what thou wilt sieve, and boil which thou wilt boil. Oh. Doon sa wilderness, walang refrigerator. Walang refrigerator doon. Mas mahirap doon. Pero, ganun ang sabi. In LNG White's time, sige, humanap kaya nang naglutok ng Sabah sa Bible. May matatagpuan ka doon. Hindi yun Sabah. Sa Exodus 12, uh, 12.16. Sabi sa Exodus 12.16, uh, ito yung pinakamalakas na verse that supports cooking on Sabbath. But it is misquoted. This is what it says. It says that, uh, In the first day will be a holy convocation unto the Lord. And in the seventh day will be another holy convocation. In that day, no one should do any work except that which is for food. Ah, pwedeng magtrabaho para sa pagkain on the seventh day. Bakit may holy convocation sa first day at saka sa seventh day? Because there is a, the days of the feast of live and live and bread. The Passover feast, if you read the whole Exodus 12, they are talking about the New Year feast, the Passover feast, and the feast of unleavened bread. So, yung seventh day yun, ay hindi yung seventh day ng week. Seventh day yun ng feast. Kung i-compute naman natin galing sa simula ng chapter, yung New Year, hindi lang yan lagi nagsisimula sa linggo. Sabi sa Wikipedia, there are four permissible days which the Jewish calendar can start. Therefore, it's not always Sunday. And therefore, the seventh day, but if kung dun yung nakastan, ay hindi ko lang alam. Therefore, it's uh, relative. Otherwise, it will contradict with the rest. Because Bible says, no cooking. E.G.Y. says, no cooking. Adventist.org says, buying and preparation of food should be done before Sabbath. Huwag nyo nang tanungin, bakit, bakit ganito? Eh, hindi alam eh. Tsaka hindi pa naturuan. Ang gawin natin natin, let's help each other to obey. So, there is example. So, the, the Pastor Sinaga says like that. And then there is another Asian, uh, there is another, uh, uh, there is another Asian theological forum. Sabi nung president ng university sa Indonesia, In our university, we successfully not cook bayan in the cafeteria. We successfully the, the bayan in the Sabbath. We cook it before Friday. Lahat ng bayan rice na lang daw ang niluluto nila pang Sabado. Well, at least they are more successful. Kung nating kancaw, no, nagluluto parang sila ng rice. At least they are more successful, di ba? It's better than nothing. So improvement, improvement. Sabi nyo ang taga ha, taga taga Muaklet na Africa. She, she is a black lady, I think from the US, she is a missionary. Sabi niya, I don't understand what's wrong with you Asians. Why can't you eat your rice unfresh? Ano daw problema natin Asian? Bakit gusto natin magsayang ng karing pagsabado? Kung ano, sabi hindi lang pala problema sa Philippines yun. Problema rin pala sa Thailand. Tapos I was preaching these things, and after the hour of worship, people are talking to me. Alam niyo sir, hindi mga lolo, lolo namin, ganyan, ganyan. Sabi ko, hindi pala yun. It's not lack of teaching in the Philippines because the law, 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 they were doing it. So what happened? Nakalimutan. Kaya sabi sa fourth commandment, remember. Kaya pala sabi, kaya pala nilagay ng Diyos, remember. 
because God knows we will forget. We will forget. So I interviewed many people. How did your people, your Lolo and your Lola, did not cook on Sabbath? Kanto. They put the rice here, they put the yami around, sometimes they put salt, and then it becomes one until Sabbath. Oh, pwede pa yun. Sabi na nga nyo, sabi ni Dr. Pais, Win, yung isang missionary natin sa Parawi at Ayon, somewhere in the island, when she retired from Nagawi as a teacher, she went as a cafeteria matron there, and they successfully avoided cooking on Sabbath by digging a hole in the ground, putting the the food there and it became, it kept warm until the next day. So, many examples. And of course, I have many friends which I will not tell the name because I don't want them to be dragged into this debate of cooking. They follow successfully, but they are shy to teach. Because it's very hard to teach this. Because it is really a difficult test, right? It is a combined test of cooking, Sabbath, and a combined test of food. The two most hard tests. But we have to teach because that's what the Bible says. That's what SOP affirms. And that's what Adventist.org agrees with. But they are not very particular to put the word cooking. You know why? My interpretation is because maybe it includes rice cooker and microwave. So I mean, uh, Anyway, they cannot contradict what is in the Bible and SOP. So what is Christ waiting for? Christ is waiting for this his church to become, to manifest himself. Okay, we are both. So, but there is a limit to God's forbearance and the transgression is almost uh, rich, uh, near. So, lastly, I want to just review this because this is the most affirmative in our church. Friends, even if you have not really reached the idea of God's Word, especially in Sabbath keeping, you are still in the right church. You are still in the right path. I want to assure you of that. You are in the right path. You are in the correct path. But of course, we are not perfect. We are supposed to be some, there is sanctification. So in God's blessed church, God's people will keep His commandments. When life is reviewed, is revealed, and we do our best to obey, God will add more right. You know why? Sometimes God doesn't add more light because the things that we already know, we are not following. They have the testimony of Jesus and they have landmark biblical doctrines. We have to know the doctrines because in the last days, the enemy will try to deceive. And when the enemy deceives, the people who don't know the doctrines will believe. But the people who know the doctrines will know what is right and what is wrong. And we have a mission and for organization, we have an organized mission, uh, we have an organization, we are not just here and there. Organization will always be essential. If you hear people saying, mas mabuti pang hindi na lang tayo organized, we grow quickly. No, it might be true statistically, but the prophet says organization will always be essential. And there is a special authority of God's church. Even if we are not perfect, the church is still God's apple of the eye. Sometimes the church has spiritual weakness and blindness. Sometimes there is abuse of power in the church headquarters. I'm just reading the head, headings. But and sometimes unwise leaders do not speak for God. But a new denomination is not needed. And God, why? God will set everything in order. Ah, I like to read this one. We are sorry that there are defective members. He has a church, but it is not the church, it is the church militant, not the church triumphant. We are sorry that there are defective members. Ayun. There are tears. Oh, huwag naman sana tayo mag tears. Amid the wheat, although there are evils existing in the church, and will be until the end of the world, the church in these last days is to be the light of the world that is polluted and demoralized of sin. And so, distribution of responsibility urge. That's why there are many elders, there are many deacons, there are even many churches every two kilometers here at uh, Diba Dito. Distribution of responsibility urge so that there will be less abuse. And the 1901 General Conference responds positively, and therefore Ellen White says, you know, in the history of Adventism, the leaders can make choices, but if they make choice that is not accord, agreeing with the prophet, it goes down. When they make choice 
they follow the counsel of the prophet, they succeed. Simple. Therefore, the GC responded positively to LNG White, to the prophet, message of the Lord, and the confidence in the SDA organization was reaffirmed. Yung mga offshoot, hanggang dito lang sila nagbabasa. Sa, ayan, sa ano, dyan. They did not read further because they don't want you to read that LNG White reaffirmed the SDA organization. But spiritual revival is still needed. And God is very patient with His people. God works with those who are faithful with Him. And we are judged by the light we receive. Israel's history is a warning to us. The church militant is not, is imperfect. Okay. And the church will be faithful and Christ-like. Ayun po. Um, mangyayari sa ating church. So, the nice thing about this is in the end, it, the end is very clear. Last day events is very nice. It's good news. The end is clear. Merong heaven, Jesus Christ is coming, there will be last plagues, the last plagues will be exempt. Yung mga, those who people, those who obey, will be uh, exempted from the last plagues, and those who don't obey, will not be exempted. There will be a close of probation, this is the problem. But the way to prepare for the close of probation is to receive the Holy Spirit, and by receiving the Holy Spirit, you attend all the church services, and all revival, and all the voice of youth, and all evangelism, so that we will get the latter rain and the former rain and will join the loud cry and will not be deceived by Satan. So, friends, uh, there are so many messages uh, from the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy. My prayer is that we will be faithful to our writings, make sure all our practices and teachings are actually according to God's Word because this is the only sureness in life. This is the only sureness. And the Lord bless us this morning.